Hi everyone, today I'm going to review this Boblov M5 body worn camera and see if it's something that you can benefit from as well, so stick around. Hi everyone, my name is Russ and welcome to my channel. On my channel I'll give you tips on how to improve your earnings and ratings as a food delivery driver. So today I'm going to review the Boblov M5 body camera. I'm going to cover six areas. First I'm going to talk about why you need a body camera. Next we're going to unbox it so you can see it fresh out of the package. Third I'm going to show you how to set it up briefly in the camera itself. And then next I'm going to show you examples of the video quality both day and night using it like I primarily do in my belt and also as a dash cam. Fifth, I'm going to give you some pros and cons of what I found after using this for about 10 weeks. And sixth, I'm going to give you my recommendation if you should buy it. The short answer is you should. Be sure to check out the video description and there'll be links in there with further information for the camera. So I do appreciate it. And I do want to thank Bob Love for sending me the camera. That way I could use it for a while and make this review for you. All right, let's get started. Why do you need a body camera? Well, let me tell you, it's for your protection. I, I, can't, I can't do this. This seat belt is too tight. Oh, you, you're making me put my seat belt on? It's a state law? Let me tell you, I have flown 3,000 times in the Los Angeles airport and not one Uber driver or Lyft driver has ever made me wear my seat belt. This is just ridiculous. You know what? You can just pull over and let me out up here and, and it's your fault. You're making me late. You are making me late and I'm gonna report you to Uber. This is ridiculous. The seat belt is too tight. I need to be able to use my laptop. How many things happen out there if you're doing work around customers or doing deliveries like I do or doing security? It's easy to have that camera on you and then it documents everything that happens. That way you can protect yourself. Video tells a lot clearer story than just your own word or pictures. So video is key. And if you want, you can go back and look at the uh, various DoorDash videos that I've made where I was unfairly terminated. And that hurt at the time, I'm over it now, but I take steps between dash cams, I use body cameras, I have the timestamp camera app on my phone where I take pictures and video of drop-offs. So if something like this ever happens again, I can at least have a fighting chance to defend myself. So the body camera is such a small thing, easy to turn on the moment that you need it, and then I turn it off when I get back to my car, and then I just maintain the footage for a while. So it is very important to have a body camera, dash camera. Somehow you have to record all your deliveries or rideshare rides that you're giving or any other industry that you're in, especially security. Again, video really helps tell the story. Next will be the unboxing. So as you can see, the box looks very elegant. Go ahead and uh, remove that. So opening it up, we have a user's manual, which I will read on how to do the variety of settings. We have the camera itself. Wow, this thing is uh, big. Look at that compared to the N9. So this is uh, much larger, that's nice. Big buttons that look like it'll be easy to control it. And then a large screen on the back. This is uh, pretty heavy and substantial. It feels definitely strong, and I can tell that's where the clip will be. So in here, looks like a power adapter. Oh yes, I recall seeing this online. It does have a suction mount. So you can put it on your windshield and also on your body. So you have it on your windshield, take it off, and then put it on your body. All right, this will be pretty neat to test. 
that would have application for rideshare drivers as well. Let's see what's in here in this mystery bag. Ooh, a clip. All right. Yeah, this is a, a much beefier clip. And I'm assuming charging cable. Yep, USB, and then the uh, same old style USB charger. And then a tiny clip. Okay. You can see how that clip is. And then this is the shoulder one. And then this is the tiny one. So, very nice. This uh, looks well made. I can tell it's heavy. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. And I look forward to seeing how reliable it is. So yeah, this camera, this camera is gonna be a lot of fun to use. And I look forward to over the next several weeks testing it out fully. And I'm gonna try to think of any scenario that I can to where um, you would find it helpful to watch this review and see if you wanna buy it for yourself. Right now on Amazon, I do see it's for sale for $149. So there you have it. What a great unboxing. Next, let's turn around and get into the camera itself. And I'll just show you briefly some of the settings that I use. And of course, you can always use the user's manual. And I know a lot of people don't. I usually try to figure out a product on my own without using it but it's there for a reason. All right, let's check it out until it comes on. On the left side here, this button is where you push to go through the menu. And this is down, that's up, and that's the back button. So let's just go into my settings for the resolution. and also push it twice to select. So the resolution you can see does the 2K, all the different ones. I stick with 1080p. And then photo size, I leave it on max. Pre-record, post-record, I don't mess with that. You could do it if you choose to. Video length, I like leaving it for the five minutes. You can see it's five, 10, 15, 20. I want to leave it on five, that way it keeps the file size small. So if there is an issue, for some reason, if it stops recording, at least I'm going to have um, the, the footage in smaller chunks so that one of those videos would survive. And then moving down, I don't use the motion detection. And then I have the screen go off in five minutes and auto power off in five minutes if I'm not using it. Key tone, I turn that off. You probably will too because it's very annoying to have every push of the button beep. Want to set the record with sound, I do want audio. And then there's different volumes on the uh, device itself. Dash camera mode, I have that off for now and you can turn it on when you use it as a dash camera. I don't know or really am concerned with antivirus. GPS. It does embed into the video. Time zone. And then device ID. I haven't been able to figure out how to not have the device ID display in the video. So I just, uh, I tried to put in Russ Ride, but you can see you're limited on the characters there. So I put Russ 22, meaning this year. And I turned off the password. This is one you'll want to do. Well, I do anyway. I like stealth mode, that way the red light is not on when you're recording, so that the customers or whomever doesn't know that you're recording. IR filter, I leave it auto. Voice broadcast, I'm not sure what that is. So that's basically it. So when you're recording, you just start off with, when it's on your body, you'll push on the right here. That's record, start, and stop. And then when I want to leave the power on, but not the screen, I'll just come in here on the left side and push right there. And that makes the screen blank. And it's still on. In five minutes, the power will go off. And then if I'm doing a 
drop off soon. You can see I can just push right there and then hit record right here on the right. It's pretty easy. Turning it on the side, you can see if you do want to record just audio, you can see right there recording video. That's mostly what I do. And then, uh, actually, I'm not sure what that is, the push to talk. You'll notice now how the mounts are. You can see this is the dash cam mount, and you see that slides in and locks. Same thing for the shoulder strap, or what I use it for is in my belt. That's how it connects in here. And then they have a tiny one for, I guess, a shirt or something, or a vest. But you can see it slides in here. The one challenge that I've found with the mount is maybe as I use it more, it'll get easier. But once you clip this in, you have to really push to get it out. And I'm sure over time it'll loosen up. But in the beginning, I found using it as a dash cam, it's kind of really hard to take it off of here and transition it back to using it as a body camera. So yes, it is used as a dash camera, but I would say you'd want to just leave it on. Um, another thing to consider with my other dash cameras, I like disconnecting them and taking them out of view when they're not in use. And so you'd have to basically push on here and get it to remove and leave the suction cup on your car. And then one more thing I forgot to mention, this is where you charge the camera using the USB cable and that's how you access the videos and audio off of the device. And in my computer, I've got a Mac, it recognized it right away and easily downloaded the videos. Just wanted to show that the audio does play from the device. When I'm making YouTube videos, I want to use my own audio because the codec, when you're trying to change this into something you can put on online, uh, the sound sometimes is challenging. In my N9 video, I think there was audio that didn't even register, but in my computer it did. Anyway, I'll record something right here so you can watch it. Turning the power on. And then I'll just push record. And it's recording right now. That way you, online on YouTube, can see me recording this right now. And I do have my audio up all the way on the computer, and it will pick it up on the microphone right here. All right, let's play it back. All right, so now we'll connect it to the computer. And then we'll bring it up with VLC. And it's recording right now. That way you, online on YouTube, can see me recording this right now. And I do have my audio up all the way on the computer, and it will pick it up on the microphone right here. All right, let's play it back. All right, so that turned out pretty good. And you can see that the auto has no problems playing. And if you were playing it back on the device um, after recording, it would be the same thing. All right, for a little bit, what I did now is I changed the mount and it was very easy to adjust. The suction cup came right off. So I just wanted to show you that. So I hope now that you see how easy it is to set up the camera, I'm gonna show you footage from a variety of deliveries that I've done both day and night. And then you'll notice the nighttime footage in the park is the same as when I recorded the Boblov N9 body camera. And that way you can kind of see the same thing. It's generally the same level of darkness. So you can enjoy that clip in there. And then also there's gonna be a lot more video after this video. That way you can take your time and watch footage and see what you think. Hey everyone and welcome back. I wanted to thank Bob Lov for sending me this magnetic mount and it's pretty cool. The camera just clips right in there so you can use this on your vest, your shirt, or anything else really where you need something that's stable and strong. So what I'm going to do is walk around and you'll see how the stabilization is on the camera. You'll notice when you watch the dash cam footage that everything looks really stable because the suction mount is very strong. And so now by using this magnetic mount, I'm gonna walk around and show you footage of what it's like. 
And then on another day, I'm gonna do more food deliveries, wearing it like this so you can see what it looks like from the perspective of a food delivery driver. All right, let's, let's take a little hike and uh, go explore nature here and see how it looks. So let's go see what's up here. And I think you'll notice a big difference from how I have it mounted on my belt. Maybe it shakes a little bit more, but with this magnetic mount, it should be a little more stable, which is good. All right, let's keep an eye out for snakes. Don't want to get bit. What a beautiful afternoon. As you can tell, it looks like we're gonna head off into the sunset and I'll be back with you on another day to show those food deliveries. What do you think of the camera so far? And again, just as a reminder to call out, I am using my external audio. I am back. I just wanted to show you briefly how this connects. So I'll hold on right here. You can see there's this mat with some magnets. And then if I just reach inside my shirt, see how that looks? So you can see if I stick this in my pocket and then it just grips on like that. Pretty cool, huh?
I'm gonna test out the night vision just like I did before as when I did the N9 camera. So I'm in the same park and it's relatively the same amount of darkness. So after that, um, I'm gonna show the car and then out here in the park and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the N9 so we can see which infrared is stronger on those cameras just for fun. All right, let's go. So we can see here, it does illuminate the car. From my memory, this does seem stronger than the uh, N9. And I don't have a can, just my water bottle there. So this is roughly, I'd say 30 feet. And I wonder how it is that you can see me. And as I come forward, this will involve some, uh, some math. So 27, 24, 21, 18, 15. And I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That's 12 feet away. And I wonder how it is on camera to be able to see me very clearly with the night vision. A little closer, about 9 feet. And about 6 feet. And I am wearing my portable audio because I know there may still be an issue of using the codec to import this into my video editor. But the main point of tonight is just to check out the night vision. bad no no oh that hurt oh that'll motivate you to to get out of the way so what did you think of all that video footage is this something that interests you let's get into now the fifth area the pros and cons of this camera the first thing that I really like about the camera is that it's well made. As you saw when I unboxed it, it seemed a little heavy, but I'll tell you what, after using it for several weeks, it's not heavy at all. It's actually very strong, and I accidentally dropped it one time, and it kept working just fine, and it didn't damage it. So the size of the camera is great. The quality, the build quality is good, and I'm very satisfied with it. The next thing that I like about the Boblov M5 is the battery life lasts all day. I've used it doing food deliveries, so that's turning it on and off multiple times. I've also used it uh, just recording for fun. I let it just sit on a table and record for four hours, and it would do it just fine. Um, I've also used it at night, so the infrared would be on, and it lasted for a very long time as well. So I would say that this meets your needs as well. I would imagine no one's gonna record solid for the entire length of the battery. You'd be using it in segments so you don't use it up. But if you did need to use it for extended stretches, it works really well. The next area that I really liked is the night vision capability. The N9 camera has three IR lights and the M5 has four. And there's a big difference you could tell when using one and the other. Um, I did that at night. I would uh, hold one away, show the uh, IR on one area, and then switch cameras so that way they're not overlapping. And you could tell the M5 had a lot stronger uh, infrared light and it would reach much further. And this really helps for food deliveries and especially for ride share as well. You want to clearly be able to see that back seat. The other thing that I really like is that it's easy to copy videos from the camera. On previous dash cams and cameras, I've been pretty particular in wanting to have removable media. That way I could copy it at my leisure on my computer. And I've always been hesitant to have something that you plug in directly to access the computer. But the M5 recognized right away and it was very easy to copy the videos. So I think it's a win. Not everything is all sunshine and rainbows, right? Well, the same thing goes for the Boblov M5. My biggest concern is the lack of video stabilization. Boblov did send me the magnetic mount, which obviously doesn't come with the camera, and you saw that did add some stability when I had it in my shirt, 
and I was walking around outside as well as delivering food. The clips that do come with the camera, however, they're designed to mount either uh, using the shoulder mount, I use it in my waist, or the tiny clip that would go on your vest or however you're attaching it to your shirt. So to meet your needs, you're gonna have to figure out where you wanna place it, where there's less motion, and then anytime when you're standing still, the video quality, the stabilization was great. And as a dash cam, this was just fine. It didn't need video stabilization. And actually you could tell the great video quality because while driving, it wasn't shaking at all and that's driving around in a car. So the main concern is video stabilization using it as a body camera. Another minor thing, which maybe I just haven't figured it out yet, is I may not want to have the time and date stamped on all my videos and the ID. On the Boblov N9, I was able to take that down. I just haven't figured it out on the M5. So maybe that's just a learning curve on my part. And again, it's a very minor con. It's not something that would keep me from buying the camera. And then another minor thing that I don't care for the camera are the mounts. If you're using it as a dash cam and you need it as a body camera, maybe in time as it loosens up, it'll be easy to remove it from the suction mount and then transition it into the other clip so that you can put it on your body. But me personally, I don't really see that being as useful. I would say once you set it up as a dash camera, it's better to leave it that way. Or if you're gonna only use it as a body camera, just leave it at that. I don't think that it would be feasible to constantly transition between both. So again, you know that that's just how it is for my needs and that's just an improvement that I could see or a limitation depending on how you're gonna use it. And if that doesn't affect you, then that's great. So overall, would I recommend this camera? Yeah! Absolutely. I think for the money, the $150 or so, it is a great camera, mostly because it's well built and it has night vision capability. That's huge. You know, you may notice the Osmos and GoPros don't have infrared capability yet. Yes, they do have video stabilization, but it costs a lot more. So for the price point, this camera is great. I love it. I use it and I'm going to keep using it, especially at night. So do check out the video description. There'll be a link there and some codes. And I do thank Bob Love for sponsoring this video. And I'm glad to help spread the word about how great this camera is. So thank you in advance for your purchase. If I receive some kind of compensation from that, thank you. I do appreciate it. Please share in the comments below on your thoughts on this camera, especially if you already have it. And then as time goes on, if you have any questions or concerns, because I also wanna keep learning about this camera. If you recall, several months ago, I made a video on the N9 camera. And as time has gone on, customers have come in and asked questions. And if it's something that I can help with, I will. Um, I'm always willing to learn new things and you also are sharing tips with me. So I do thank you very much for all the feedback. And until I see you in my next video, take care everybody, stay safe out there and keep earning that money. All right, bye. Hi, my name is Russ. What is your name? Oh, hi. My name is Russ Ride. Oh, get on in. Oh, could you unlock it? Oh. Thanks, Russ. Oh, you're awesome to be able to come get me. Wow, what a nice car. Hey, is, uh, is that a dash cam up there? Wow. You know what? I'm going to take a video of that because, whoa, that's kind of bright, I'm so sorry. It's almost as bright as that red blinking light up there. I think you may need to put a uh, piece of electrical tape over that top left red blinking light. Oh, thank you so much, Russ, for picking me up today. And I, I just wanted to let you know that when I cry, I get violent. Yeah, I 
I, I sometimes when I just cry a lot, I'll get violent and, and my parents, they have to restrain me. They basically have to tie me up until I can control myself. Yeah, so I, I try not to cry. Looks like so far that infrared should be really lighting up this back seat pretty good. Oh, sir, thank you so much for picking me up. Oh, yeah, my, my day's going well. I'm, uh, I'm headed to go to my therapy appointment. Yeah, it's um, behavioral health therapy. It's, you know, like a psychologist. It doesn't seem like you want to talk to me too much. Did you want me to? No. Yeah, on that ride, I uh, didn't ask too many probing questions after I heard about the uh, the psych visit. I was like, oh, all right, well, let's get you to that appointment quickly. <laughs> and same thing with the young woman that, uh, that shared that when she cries, she gets violent. And then she talked about her parents restraining her. And at that point, I thought, you know what, let's get you to your destination quickly. And naturally, as you can imagine, um, the gentleman that flew into LAX all the time and basically had a temper tantrum because he didn't want to wear his seatbelt, even though I explained that it's a state law, he directed me to pull over and I let him out. And then I immediately called Uber and said, I please back me up on this. It's a state law. The passenger did not want to wear the seatbelt. He refused to. And I was being polite and respectful, but firm. I did the old trick of, uh, oh, sir, don't forget to put on your seatbelt. And then when he didn't do it, I nicely asked him again. And then I said, sir, you need to put your seatbelt on. So what I recommend on the Russ Ride channel, if you watch the video, it's the ninth one he made, it's called something about um, putting your seatbelt on riders, please do watch that. Um, he put a lot of effort into it and I think it would give some really good insight for rideshare drivers on how to encourage their passengers to put their seatbelts on. And you know, before I get out, I, I want you to know why that's important. Basically, you can get sued if you're involved in an accident or any legal issue of uh, getting a ticket from not wearing a seat belt, guaranteed those gig app companies are not going to support you. They're going to leave you out to dry. So protect yourself. Oh, and I forgot to mention, probably the customer is going to sue you as well. So please be firm and polite and just remind the passenger to put their seat belt on. I would say about 70% of the passengers when I did rideshare, I'd have to gently remind them like that. So check out that video for tips on how to politely encourage their compliance. Wow. All right, well, it looks like this dash cam is a success. The uh, night vision should be illuminating everything back here so you can clearly see what's going on if you're doing rideshare. My one recommendation would be to put some black electrical tape over the blinking red and the solid blue light. It's not, it's not enough that I wouldn't use it, but me personally, I would, I would cover that up. All right, well, thank you so much, sir, for this ride. Of course. And, uh, you know, stay safe out there. And you know what, I'm gonna tip you in the app. Thank you. Have a good day.